I'm going to be breaking down a renovation on a potential bird deal for one of my clients. Long, this is your show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host. I got confused. I didn't remember which TV it was on for a second. <laughs> it's that one. I'm your host, James Wise, and uh, today... I'm working with my man Long, okay? Long, you're an investor from Texas, brother. And uh, we just recently did a show together, okay? Episode 178. Uh, anybody else who's watching Long's show right now, if you're curious to uh, see what Long and I were talking about in episode 178, it's in the show notes below. Uh, and one other thing, just so everybody's aware, okay? Uh, these shows, they get sent to my clients. They get sent to my investors privately first, okay? I do not release these on Holton Wise TV publicly until these deals are totally gone. And I did episode 178 for you long, and me and you are considering uh, whether or not you want to make a move on that property. But you wanted me to check out this particular property. You sent this to me, and you wanted me uh, to break this down for you so we can compare and contrast. It's something you're very interested in. Uh, it is already contingent under contract, uh, so that means another buyer uh, has placed it under contract uh, contingent on their inspection. So it may come back to the market. It may not. Uh, but you are so interested in this, I believe, more so to really just compare and contrast because this is one of the neighborhoods that was big on your list of areas of interest. But uh, I believe this neighborhood is going to be a little bit above the budget you've set for me. Uh, so that's why in episode 178, I sent you that other property, right? So this one was on the market for 95 days till it went contingent, right? 44,900. And I think this is a pretty nice property long. I do. I like the property. Uh, but again, I, I think it's just going to be way above your budget what you want to do, right? Because you were trying to stay in the 35K range. Now, with this one, even if it did fall out of contract or what I think it's worth or like what I think maybe the other buyers under contract currently, I think it's worth about $40,000. And then as far as renovations, we're going to need a minimum of $20,000 worth of reno, right? So we're going to need to put in a minimum of $60,000. Now, where am I getting that $20,000 renovation from, right? You see the front looks pretty decent, okay? When we get inside, okay, the first thing, right? First of all, this like old dated wood, you know, it doesn't have to be removed, but we do need to paint it, right? We'll go agreeable gray, but what is a issue here is right here, you see this, okay? You see those tiles? What those are, those are probably going to be asbestos tiles, right? Now, if they're all in good condition, okay, and they're not cracking, it's not like illegal uh, or anything, but uh, if they start cracking, that poses a problem, and you have to remediate them. So you're better off getting rid of those things before people uh, move in, right? So we'd probably want to encapsulate them, so we would lay flooring over it, okay? So in this room, right, this little enclosed porch, we're painting, we're encapsulating the floor. Uh, we got to do paint, right? Paint throughout, okay? Even, like... In the pictures, this doesn't look bad, but when we get up close, I'm sure there's scuffs marks everywhere. I mean, it's like white, dude, so it's going to show everything, right? All, when all this furniture's gone, it's going to look scuzzy, right? So we're pulling these floors, putting, uh, refinishing the hardwoods if they're under there. We're getting rid of that carpet, refinishing the hardwoods if they're, un if they're under there, putting the vinyl flooring that we put in the enclosed porch throughout the rest of the house. Probably going to paint the trim white, paint the walls in agreeable gray, okay? We're going to do that to every room in the house, right? We're going to remove dated fixtures, right? Like this ceiling fan from like 1985. This has got to go. And we want to just have fans out of these houses anyway, right? We want to replace it with just like a, 
a light fixture, right? Anything that tennis could hang on, they're probably going to do so, and they're going to break it eventually, right? So if it moves and it doesn't have to move, get rid of it, right? Speaking of getting rid of shit, this dishwasher, first of all, it's from fucking 1970, so get that motherfucker out of there just for that. But dishwashers in properties like this, they don't make investors money. I've had thousands of tenants. Over the long haul, okay, having a dishwasher, you would think, oh, I'll get more rent, they'll stay longer. It doesn't pencil out. It's not a money maker, man. So cut it, right? And then we'll refinish the cabinets, get a that vinyl floor, the same vinyl floor I've been talking about. That'll go in here. We'll get some nice countertops making this thing look pretty good, okay? Uh, just, you know, more of the same, right? Just all this dated stuff. The bedrooms, bedrooms are super simple, super easy, right? Make sure this is good and refinished. You know, sometimes we like to go with like a darker stain, right? Because you see right here? See that? Let me pull that up a little bigger for you guys. You see that? See these scratches, right? And that's just what you can see here on the picture. Like when you actually get up close, I'm sure it's a lot worse. So a nice dark stain is really forgiving on all that. And then, of course, these walls will all be fresh, agreeable gray, and we'll have fresh white paint on these trim, on the trims, right? Bathroom, you know, the tub. Not bad. Nice little one piece. Probably just reglaze that, update this fixture, install a new toilet, nice low flow toilet, keep your water bill down. Okay. Now, the big ticket items were already taken care of, which I believe is probably why you were interested in this property. Uh, but I don't know if you anticipated the $20,000 reno. So we got a newer furnace, which is great. They last about 30 years, cost about three G's. Newer hot water tank, updated electrical is what they told us too. Here is the other thing though, right? I know we're going to spend 20. Uh, Garfield Heights is a city that has a point of sale. Um, the listing agent hasn't mentioned anything, which, by the way, listing agent, uh, cat out of Keller Williams, right? Keller Williams, they ain't saying nothing about the point of sale, which leads me to believe they haven't even ordered it yet. So if you are interested in this property long, the fact that it's under contract right now, don't even, don't even like, let that think you. There's a very damn good chance that this thing comes back, right? Because here's the deal with the point of sale. The city comes in. They inspect the property. They issue violations. And I've stopped at this picture for a specific reason, by the way. They issue these violations. Either the seller has to correct said violations, right, prior to the sale, or the buyer has to assume and put money in escrow, all that jazz. The most efficient and intelligent way to sell a property in a municipality that has a point of sale is you order the point of sale because, you know, your seller, they probably know, uh, if they want to have the buyers assume it, if they're willing to do repairs, uh, or at least, you know, they're going to need that information, right? Because if the seller's like, yeah, I'll fix all the POS repairs, but the seller doesn't know what the POS repairs are going to be, how does the seller know the seller can actually do that? Likewise, how does the buyer know the buyer's willing to actually accept the POS repairs but they don't know what the fuck they are, right? So when we're this deep into a listing and they still haven't said anything about the POS, that means they haven't ordered the fucking POS. Uh, and either you get that because you have an agent who's not familiar with the POS system, or you get a seller who's like, I'm not going to order the POS until I get an offer. Well, that offer doesn't mean shit if, we don't, if all the cards aren't out, right? Because here is why I stopped at this picture. Right now I'm anticipating $20,000 of renovation. But I have got a really good hunch that the city of Garfield is going to be like, yo, motherfucker, fuck that driveway. You need to replace that shit. All right, it's going to be 10 G's right there, okay? So right now, I don't know what's going on, but we got a seller who might not necessarily know there's a $10,000 violation, right? Does the buyer know? I don't know, right? So sometimes, folks, they put these things under contract, and it's like contingent on review of the POS, but neither side knows what's going to happen with the POS. So if that ends up being the case, right, my, uh, you know, my projection for you, $40,000 acquisition price, $20,000 rehab. So if it turns out that uh, the city cites this $10,000 deal here, one of two things has to happen, right? Either our price has to come down to 20 k uh, I, I'm sorry, our price has to come down to 30 k We have to drop our price 10 k or the seller's got to spend 10 k on this. So, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. So the, that type of thing can happen with the current seller, right, and the current buyer. So wouldn't be shocked if this comes back on the market. That said, though, long, I still don't necessarily know if this works for what you're trying to do. Uh, after we do all that stuff, it's two bed, two bath homes. So we'll be able to easily get a tenant in there at 850, preferably on the Section 8 program. Keep that rent coming in consistently. Of that 850, I anticipate 
after you do all your normal stuff, uh, your normal averages, accounting for vacancy, maintenance, even though we got new furnace, new hot water tank, updated electrical, right? Every 30 years, you got to spend three Gs on a furnace. Every 15 years, you're going to have to spend probably about a G on a hot water tank, things of that nature. So after all that, I think this thing going net 293 on average for you. If you end up all in at 60 Gs, that's a 5.9 cap, right? That'd be assuming that the seller went in and replaced this for us if the city did cite it that'd be a 5.9 cap you go ahead and if you wanted to finance the sucker you only need 11,250 bank loans you 48,750 so it's a 9.4 percent cash on cash return right so the property itself is good I like the property if you have the opportunity to do it I don't think it would be a bad deal if we could pick it up at that price but I needed you to understand all of these costs and where we're at because, you know, on one hand, you, you set me up, you're like, yo, I want to spend about 35000 right? This this particular property, as nice as it is, it's going to be about double what you want to do. So, you know, maybe your purpose for uh, looking into this is, hey, is it worth spending double what I wanted to spend to get into the neighborhood I want to be in? Possibly, yeah. I mean, again, I don't think it's a bad investment. Or did you want this to contrast it with the one I sent you in episode 178 where you're like, you know what, I'm going to stick to my budget and then I'm going to get a property that's in a lesser quality neighborhood. So, long. Uh, let us know what you want to do. Reply to the private link, and uh, we will go from there. If after uh, watching both of these videos, you've come up with a completely new set of criteria, and on your next video, you want me to completely shift gears, that's totally cool too, man. When you get these packages, right, the idea isn't to just sell you properties. The idea is to educate you on the market along the way, right? So if you get, like, let's say a 10-property package, for $2,000, which is a great fucking price, guys. So if you're thinking about it, go to HoltonWise.com, Property Search for Sale tab, click the MLS Search and Analysis Show, get a package, work with me like my dude Long is already doing, guys. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do just, it. Just <laughs> but do if But you're, if you're thinking, right, you're going through these, though, right? What I'm trying to say, sorry. Uh, you know, buy my shit, guys. Buy my shit. <laughs> but if you're thinking, uh, you know, like, you know, it's just to sell your properties. It's not, right? Like, you had a certain set of expectations, and then I sent you episode 178, right? Now your level uh, of knowledge on the market has increased, right? You have a different set of expectations. You wanted me to look into this because you're curious about it. So now I've done that. I've looked into this. So now you have so much more information at your disposal than you previously had, and that's how this program is supposed to work, guys. That's the point of this program, right? If you don't want to buy the property in episode 178, cool. If you don't want to buy this or can't buy this, that's cool too. The idea is to, you know, help you figure out what you want, right? Because what you originally told me you wanted That'd be great, but, you know, it's just not practical, right? So we got to combine what you think you want, what you think you know, with what's actually out there on the market. And by the time we navigate through enough videos together, guys, we should be able to match you with the perfect property for you. Or, you know what? Maybe we won't. Maybe your expectations... Uh, we're just different than what the market is producing. We're just different than what, uh, you know, the real estate business and what's actually happening out there is. I would much rather you spend a few hundred bucks or up to, a, you know, a couple thousand bucks on a ton of videos and a ton of work for me, a ton of due diligence before you drop 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 and get yourself entangled into this real estate investment portfolio and then realize, oh, fuck, this really isn't for me, right? So that's kind of what the program's about guys you know i am your hired gun i am here to give you guys information so ask questions change your criteria right very much uh you know an adjustable process right i do a video send it to you you send me your feedback i take that feedback i make the next video we go from there if we end up doing deals great if we don't great i want to make sure if you do do a deal it's the right deal for you that is all i got for you today long so again reply to the private link everybody else if you're watching this this deal, everything is dust is settled, and I've released it publicly on Holton Weiss TV so you guys could all watch it for free much later. So if you're new to the show, first time you've tuned in, do yourself a solid and smash that subscribe button because Holton Weiss TV is real estate investing made easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs 
I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%, that's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. U.S. REIB is a full-service, turnkey provider offering investors the opportunity to purchase single-family and multi-family investment properties in Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and Kansas City, Missouri. The purchase process is seamless, from reserving a property to obtaining financing, inspections, and insurance referrals, U.S. REIB has a dedicated team in place to manage the process from start to finish. In addition, U.S. REIB is also directly integrated with its own private placement fund for accredited investors. The fund seeks to raise $10 million to capitalize on the repositioning of distressed single-family and multifamily real estate. RentTech Direct provides you with an easy-to-use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. For property managers, you get advanced features like simplified owner distributions, automated management and placement fees, an owner portal, plus the software is certified for trust accounting. All this comes backed by the highest rated customer support team in the industry, certified by third parties and ranked number one by our clients year over year. You get unlimited free access to our US-based support team by phone, email and chat who will help you getting started or anywhere along the way. Over 50% of those living in the greater Memphis area rent their home. This fact combined with the high price to rent ratio is why Forbes rates Memphis, Tennessee as one of the top real estate investment markets in the country. Memphis Investment Properties and their sister property management company, Reedy & Company Realtors, are among the largest and most trusted turnkey operations in this market. With over 30 years in business, a portfolio consisting of more than 2,700 active rentals, and an impeccable track record renovating over 6,000 single-family homes, it's no surprise they are one of the most reputable turnkey operations in the United States. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.